Geomestic channel. Today we're going to tackle CPCTC, this acronym that you're going to run into when you're dealing with triangle congruence. We're going to talk about what the heck that means and how we're going to use it. If you have not already, check out the description for some links to some guided notes if you'd like to write some things down and follow along, feel free to do so. And by now, you've likely looked into triangle congruence rules like side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side, where you found that it's possible to use three parts of triangles to prove that they are congruent. For example, um, by marking this information in these two triangles, we could conclude that those two triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. In these two triangles, each one has a pair of angles, a pair of sides, and a pair of angles marked congruent in that order. So those two triangles are congruent based on this angle, side, angle postulate. Now, let me put some of her letters up here. A, B, C, and D, E, F. Okay, so for angle, side, angle, We know that angle A is congruent to angle D. We know that segment AB is congruent to segment DE. And then angle B is congruent to angle E. Okay, so these three pieces of information are what we use um, to determine that these are congruent by angle side angle. Now, once we know the triangles are congruent, we can make conclusions about the non-marked parts of these two triangles because, by definition, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, so what else in this picture has to be congruent based on that fact? Well, anything else that's not marked congruent will have to be congruent because these are congruent triangles. Um, namely, we know that segment AC is congruent to segment DF. We know that segment BC is congruent to segment EF, and we know that angle C is congruent to angle F. Okay, so the other three parts that are not yet marked also have to be congruent. So AC is congruent to DF, angle C is congruent to angle F, and segment BC is congruent to segment EF. Okay, those pieces have to be congruent because the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are, in fact, congruent. So the fact that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, we're able to use that as a justification to prove certain statements. Um, because it would be super annoying to write out the statement, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, every time we wanted to use that in a proof. Um, and because mathematicians just in general love acronyms, we're going to abbreviate that as CPCTC. Now, the biggest point here is to recognize that we can only use this fact after we already know the triangles or the figures are congruent to one another. Okay, so let's look at a couple examples, which we'll set up as two column proofs. So in this situation, we're going to be given that angle W is congruent to angle Y, and that angle WXZ is congruent to angle YZX, angle YZX. In this case, we're going to prove segment WZ is congruent to segment XY. Okay, so the big thing here again, notice what we are trying to prove. Probably in the past, in the, in the, you know, in the problems that you've been doing um, recently, you're trying to prove that the triangles are congruent. Okay, so notice that's not the case in this example here. We're trying to prove that these two segments are congruent to one another. And to do that, what we're gonna look at is um, try to figure out a way that we can prove the triangles are congruent and then kind of go from there. So if we set up our two column proof,
Okay, statements and reasons. Start with what we know, we'll start with the given information. We got two pieces here, so we'll get those in. We know angle W, this is going to go to angle Y. Okay, I want to go ahead and mark that into the picture. So angle W, which is here, can go to angle Y. And then second, angle W, X, Z is congruent to angle Y, Z, X, also given, which we'll mark as well. So angle W, X, Z, W, X, Z, that's this angle right up here. And then angle Y, Z, X, this angle down here. All right, so if we kind of look at the road map here, we're gonna work backwards a little bit. Um, if we want to prove WZ and XY are congruent, which are these two left and right sides, again, we want to know first that the triangles are congruent. So that's really the first step. Do we have that these two triangles are congruent? Do we have enough information to use one of those triangle shortcuts? We've already got two pairs of angles congruent, which means we only need one more thing. And you can probably tell pretty quickly if you've been doing this enough that these two triangles share a side. They line up back to back on this middle um, segment here, ZX. And of course, you're familiar with the reflexive property that says any segment is congruent to itself. So that middle segment right there, we can say ZX is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. Okay, so now we do have enough information to say that these two triangles are congruent. You can see what order these markings are in. We've got two pairs of angles, one side. The order that we have it is an angle, angle, and then a side. Okay, so we know the triangles are congruent. Let's go ahead and state that. So triangle, um, we'll call it triangle WXZ is congruent to triangle YZX. And we said that was due to this um, angle angle side theorem. Okay, so we know the triangles are congruent. Does that just mean the three parts that we have marked are congruent? No, that means everything. All the corresponding pieces of these two triangles will be, in fact, congruent to one another. Thus, WZ and XY are two corresponding sides of these two triangles, meaning they have to be the same. If the triangles are congruent, any other parts of those two triangles are congruent as well. So our last step then, we know that WZ is congruent to XY, and that is because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or CPCTC. Okay, so again, biggest thing is, we have to have this step, we have to show the triangles are congruent before we can use CPCTC. So you'll always have a reason that the triangles are congruent before you can say that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, easy enough. Let's try one more. And as always, we'll try to bump up the difficulty just a little bit here. Oh, I guess I could leave that. Okay, this one's gonna look just a little bit different here. So two pieces of information that we're gonna be given. AE is congruent to DC. And we're gonna say AE is also parallel to DC. Okay, so this little symbol right there, don't forget that means parallel. In this case, we're gonna to try to prove, okay, so pay attention now, EC bisects AD. Okay, so this is what we're trying to prove. EC bisects AD. So that should probably look a little bit different than what you're used to. Doesn't change how we start the proof because you start with what you already know. AE is congruent to DC, which has been given 
to us. Let's mark it in the picture. AE DC. Second AE is also parallel to DC, which has been given to us as well. Parallel, little arrows show parallel lines. Okay, so here's what we have. Again, let's kind of work backwards a little bit. I want to prove that EC bisects AD. Number one, we have to know what bisect means. Bisect just means cut in half. So if EC is bisecting AD, we have to know that EC is cutting AD in half. So here's AD right there. How would we know that AD was being cut in half by this segment um, EC? How would we know? Well, things are cut in half, that means you have two equal parts, two equal halves, meaning that AB and DB, these two segments, would have to be the same length. Okay, so if we knew that AB and DB were the same length, that would, in effect, tell me that EC is bisecting AD. So if we think backwards, to be able to say this is true, I'd have to know that BD and AB were congruent. Okay, so we're going to do this kind of the same way we did the first one. I really want to know first that the triangles are congruent, I want to get that. Then once I know the triangles are congruent, um, all their other corresponding parts would have to be the same, which is gonna give us EC bisecting AD. Okay, so before we get back down here, we have to get that these two triangles are congruent. We got a little bit of work to do because right now we only have one pair of sides. We need three parts. You should be able to tell. Again, if you have the bow tie shape, you've got these angles here in the middle at B. Those are vertical angles and those are always congruent to one another. Let's get those marked in. These two angles we'll call A, B, E. Is congruent to D, B, C. And those are vertical angles. Okay, so a pair of angles, a pair of sides. We need one more piece of information marked in here. And we're gonna get that from our parallel lines. Okay, hopefully you recognize by now that anytime you have triangles and parallel lines, you're probably gonna get those special angle pairs um, that give you congruent angles. We're gonna have those here whenever we have parallel lines cut by a transversal. In this case, we actually have two transversals. Um, doesn't matter which one we pick, we're gonna have the same outcome here. So parallel lines, let's use, um, let's just use this transversal. So parallel lines cut by a transversal, we're gonna have alternate interior angles. Okay, so angle A is congruent to angle D. Because these lines are parallel, the transversal runs through, alternate interior angles are always congruent to one another. So we'll say angle A is congruent to angle D because they are alternate interior angles. I could have used E and C, those are alternate interior as well. I don't need another pair of angles since I already have the two here. That's gonna be enough to get these triangles congruent to one another. Because once again, we have angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side in both triangles. Okay, so we've got angle, angle, side. Let's go ahead and state that these two triangles are congruent. We'll say triangle AEB is congruent to triangle CDB. And that is by angle, angle, side. Alrighty, we're getting close. Okay, once we know that the triangles are congruent, we know that any other of their corresponding parts would also have to be congruent. Anything else that's not marked congruent in this picture, if I match up the sides or match up the angles, I know that all their corresponding parts are the same. Okay, so which parts do we need again? If I wanna show that EC is bisecting AD, I need to know that AB and DB are the same length. If AD gets bisected, these two segments right here, I'm gonna mark it in blue so you see. Okay, these two need to be the same, which they are because we've just said that these two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. So I do know that segment AB is congruent to segment DB because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent CP, CTC. Now this isn't our last step in this case because this is what we're trying to prove. 
we know that AD is getting bisected. We've just showed that AB and DB are the same, which is what the definition of bisect is, to cut something in half. So last but not least, I know that EC will bisect AD. Now what are we gonna say is our reason here? How did we know that EC bisected AD? Well, we knew that because bisect means to cut in half. We've got two halves that are equal. It's the definition of bisect. So we'll say definition of bisect. Nice work. All right, to wrap things up, CPCTC is just an extension of triangle congruence and it just kind of gives us the ability to draw more conclusions within a set of congruent figures. Kind of opens up the playbook a little bit, so to speak, to give us some more options in our proofs. If this video was helpful for you, please do me a solid. Share it with somebody that you think might benefit from it as well. Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.